if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday morning, and I'm gonna be going out to do a few photographs of a particular scene that I want to shoot. And it's perfect because the clouds are really nice today. They're really dramatic, and that's what I wanna try and capture. It's a landscape that I wanna be shooting not too far from where I live and it overlooks the sea. So I'm uh, gonna get some nice views as well. The tools of choice I'm gonna be using is gonna be my Pentax Spotmatic F. And I've put a 28, I think it's a 28, yeah, 28 mil um, Hanimex, 28 mil Hanimex HMC lens. I've, uh, I've actually borrowed this from a friend for the last couple of years and uh, he doesn't mind, he doesn't use it anymore. And he said to me, you're welcome to just uh, shoot as much as you like with it. So it's not mine, but I know you can pick these up pretty cheap online, uh, second hand. So that's the lens I'm gonna be using, nice wide lens. And it's a good sharp lens as well. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. And I'm also gonna be shooting the 400 T-Max from Kodak. And if you watched my last video about developing the uh, Xtol developer, I'm looking forward to putting this in the Xtol and seeing what results we get. So I'm going to do a few shots just with the lens as is, and then I'm going to do a few shots with the red filter just to really sort of hit those skies and hopefully make the clouds pop. So um, let's get in the car, let's get up to where I need to be and get a few pics in the can and come back, develop and print and see what we come up with. So here I am, I'm up on the down, up on the downs, I'm up on the downs and um, I'm up and down on the downs. Behind me is the scene I want to take a photograph of and uh, that over there is Sandown on the Isle of Wight, looking down over Sandown. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see too well on the uh, video camera there, but the clouds look pretty awesome. So uh, I'm gonna get on with taking a few shots. I'm gonna take three shots first, just bracket, meter up, probably gonna use a sunny 16 roll, and then put the red filter on and do the same again and get back and develop. It's pretty easy, really. That's the scene. I've got no tripod because I've got to be shooting a fast shutter speed because I've got the 400 T-Max in there. Um, so there's going to be no camera shake whatsoever. Uh, yeah, let's have a go. Um, I've only used this a couple of times in the past on my photographs, but I thought I'd bring it out today and give it a try. You know, unless you practice with these things, you're never going to uh, know how to use them when you really do need them or, or want to use them. So, hey ho, let's bring it out, the red filter, and give it a go. So I know that it's going to give me three stops less light. So where I was shooting at 500th of a second and F11 and F16, the last ones, I'm going to bring this down to the shutter speed two stops to 125th of a second and then the aperture to f8 uh, so that gives me a three stop um, difference if you like from what i was shooting before so i'm going to shoot this f8 and f11 at 125th of a second um, hopefully that should work i'm not going to go any lower than uh, or any wider than uh, f8 because it's a landscape and i'll end up getting kind of um, not a sharp image i don't think as i want but um, and i can't go down to a 60th of a shutter speed because I haven't got a tripod apart from the one this camera's sitting on but uh, that's not the whole that's not the point if I didn't have the camera I wouldn't have a tripod so um, I decided to go handheld that's what I'm going to do right let's get these shots in oh so that's it that's pretty much goody gumdrops for me um, I've taken three shots with the red filter um, and two shots without the red filter. Just looking at the land, the sea and the sky. I kept the horizon straight. That's most important when you're doing uh, any landscape, especially seascapes. It's just keeping that, hori that the uh, horizon nice and straight. If it goes on a wonk, it kind of puts you off when you look at the print. But even if you have shot it on a wonk, you can always adjust it inside the darkroom on the easel. I'll show you that later on because I probably was on a wonk um, without using the tripod. But uh, I've just seen what, a, a couple more shots I want to take uh, back with me. So I'll just take the camera over there and show you that now. Hopefully you guys can see this, but this all this uh, reevy stuff here, it looks really nice. And I'm going to try and go for a slightly slower shutter on it to try and blur it a little bit, but hopefully at the same time keep the sky and the clouds all in focus. Uh, I wasn't intending to do any more photography to be honest with you up here. I'm not one of those shooters that just keep shooting 
and shooting and shooting everything that moves. I'd rather put the uh, film back in the camera for, uh, for another day when I really want to when I find something to shoot. But I kind of like these, so uh, I'm going to give it a little go, take a few shots there, and then get back. Okay, so I'm back in my dark room now. It was pretty windy up on the downs and uh, it's the next day because it's World Cup at the moment and I ended up watching the football games yesterday. So uh, this morning I'm going to be developing that film and hopefully getting some good results out of it. So I'll just show you the setup that I've got. Pretty much ready to go now to take the film out of the camera. And then I've got the uh, Kodak x -Tol, which I mixed the other day. You saw me doing it on one of my videos. This is um, at one part x to one part water at 20 degrees. So that's ready to go to developer. This is the stock bath I'm using, which I'm using this stock bath. Quite cheap and cheerful, but it works. And uh, my normal photo speed fixer that I use as well. I've got my developing tank here and back to the camera. So let's get this out of the uh, camera, get it inside the developing tank and then see what we come up with. Okay, so the film is inside the developing tank. Online it says to develop for 9 minutes and 25 seconds, so that's what I've got there. So um, I'm going to agitate normally every minute. So uh, let's pull the developer in, then I'll start the timer. Take the thermometer out. In goes the X-Tol. Start the timer and just agitate one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've done no tests with this film at all. This is the first time I've used this film, so uh, I'm just going to wing it for now. And maybe if I want to at some point in the future, I might do some tests to see what the best uh, speed and development process is for me. But at the moment, I'm just going to use this bog standard. Hopefully get a good result. Okay, so while the film's washing, I'll just show you what I'm going to be printing with. So this is the Ilford multi-grade warm paper. And remember I said on my previous video about this paper, as uh, I wasn't going to use it again until I got some warm tone developer. And thanks to the subscribers that have bought some of my prints, I've been able to put some money back into some chemicals, which is great news. And uh, so I've got this warm tone developer. So I'm going to give this a go, see how it comes out. And here they are. How do they look? They look a bit dense, but I can't really see until I put them in a light box and have a look. Actually, they don't look that bad at all. When you put them against the light, look quite nice. I'll let these dry and then we'll get some printing done. Okay, so the film's dry and I've been in the dark room now for about half hour just dabbling with some tests. You can see this is a, a contact strip uh, test that I did and this is the contact sheet that I did it's only half a piece of paper just for these few negatives and you can see these are the ones with the bushes and down there was the uh, landscape ones as well now um, these two are without the red filter and this one's with the red filter I think this must have been f11 and this would have been um, f16 and this one here was f5.6 so I decided to go for this one here. As you can see, it's got, let's try and focus that in. As you can see, it's got more detail in the sky, um, easy to work with. Maybe this one I could work with as well with some contrast filters maybe, but um, this is what I'm gonna be playing with. And I've already done a test strip, which is here, at three seconds, three, six, nine, twelve, so, so, so. As soon as I started getting over to this area, the image started to get, the print started to get a bit muddy, so, I decided to stay at six seconds. It looks a bit light, but they're going to use a contrast five filter to bring that back out. And uh, this is a smaller test print at um, six seconds. And uh, so six seconds normal, and then six seconds with a contrast five filter, and then I burnt the sky in for another 10 seconds. But it's still too gray. I just want to try and get these areas here black and uh, just try and really get the image to pop. So that's where I am at the moment. I'm going to do a little few more play arounds and uh, I'll come back to you with uh, some more results. Okay, so hopefully I've got this sorted now. I'm going to put a 10 by 8 piece of paper in in a second. Um, I couldn't manage to burn the sky in any better. It just started getting a bit muddy, as you can see there. Um, even with the contrast filter, I just couldn't balance those uh, that grey clouds out. They are grey. 
I don't want them to look that muddy, so I'm going to um, do six seconds on the old image, six seconds with a contrast five filter, and then just burn the sky in probably for about another three seconds with a contrast five filter in as well. Um, but one tool I do want to use is this on the sea. I just find this the sea is a little bit, little bit dark, a little bit too grey. So just by using this little dodge tool, just over the sea during the exposure, uh, the first second exposure, probably just for a few seconds, um, it should lighten the sea up a little bit. And then the last part I've got to try and play with is the, the oops, sorry about that, is the background here the hills in the background I just want them to be a little bit darker so somehow I'm gonna to have to burn those in um, so I'm probably just going to use two pieces of card like this one there and one coming down like that so we'll see I'll uh, put the cameras on the enlarger and see how we can get on with the print so I hope you guys can see what I'm doing so there's my dodge tool that I'm going to be using and these are the two uh, pieces of card that I'm going to use to burn in the back the hills at the back um, and a contrast filter there, number five. So let's get the paper out, put on the easel, and give it a go. And this is the only crack I'm going to have at this. I'm not going to waste uh, any more paper. I've already done a few sheets making test strips. So we'll do our first initial six seconds. I need to just dodge the C after a few seconds. One, two, three, there it goes. Put in contrast five filter. For six seconds. Just give the paper a little waft. So the hairs fall on it. Just burn the sky in for another five seconds. And the last part is to, it's pretty difficult for me to see because I've got the red light projected on the easel for you guys to see. Um, so it means that it's quite faint for me, but uh, I'll give it a go. That's what it's all about. There's the mounting. That's about enough, hopefully that's burnt that in. Well, the truth. Into the developer. It's looking nice at the moment. Into the stop bath. And here's the final print, it's just been washed and it's now hanging to dry. You can see the clouds um, are okay, they're quite nice. Uh, the sea, I've got some highlights in it now and I've got more contrast in the back on the um, on those, on the land at the back and also in the front, I've got a little bit. I could have done a little bit, maybe a little bit of dodging there on that field area, but it's not, you know, that's just being pernickety now. I'm quite happy with the print, so let it dry and have a look. And while it's doing that, I'm going to have a look at the other ones with the grass and the reeves. And behind the scenes, I just finished this print. This isn't on worn tone paper. This is just on normal uh, Ilford resin multi-grade paper. And yeah, it's come out quite nice. I wish the clouds were a little bit more dramatic. They were in the morning, but um, when I got there, they kind of just got a bit more overcast. So, But hey-ho, it's still a nice print anyway. And uh, a good little photo exercise to do. So that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I was quite excited about, when I saw the clouds, I was quite excited about getting out and taking them photographs, especially using the Kodak T-Max 400, because I've never used this before. And also the prospect of putting it in the x that I mixed up the other day, which I've also got a video on. And uh, I was quite excited about using the two together and seeing the results. And I'm really impressed with what I've come back with. Um, you know, 
it was by no means a, a planned shoot or anything like that. I just went up with a small Pentax, stuck a roll of filming, took a few shots, come back, developed and printed. And that's the one there you can see. A little bit of trickery, a little bit of you know dodging and burning and stuff. Some contrast filters going on on the larger in the print. Um, but I think it was all worthwhile at the end of the day. So uh, I'm quite happy with that print there. I'll scan it and stick it up on my Instagram account if you want to see it. And then um, I went off and printed one of the other shots. If you can see that there. That's just on normal resin paper, but still with that warm tone developer, because that's the only developer, I've, that's the only print developer I've got at the moment. So, um, but it still works fine on normal resin paper. And uh, yeah, I quite like that as well. I could have done a little bit more work on that, maybe just a little bit of blown highlight in this area. But the you know the clouds become less contrasty uh, when I got to um, up on the downs. The clouds weren't as, as dramatic as they were when I left. So, um, but it doesn't matter to me. I've enjoyed myself in a dark room. I've had fun taking photographs and that's what it's about at the end of the day. So uh, anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. Um, please like, subscribe, share and all that stuff. And uh, enjoy the World Cup if you're watching it. And I'll catch you next time.